Gorecast is brought to you by American Horrors, the greatest uncut horror channel in the world. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, all horror. As well as the station of decapitation without your head. America's longest running horror channel, www.withoutyourhead.com. The following program is rated TV MAL. It contains strong language and is intended only for mature audiences. Viewer discretion advised. Hey all you cool cats and kittens, Buzz and Carter here for another episode of Gorecast Unplugged. Yay! <laughs> We're here again. It's the Buzz and Carter show. It's Tuesday, so um, we have a doozy of an episode. Um, we are going to be talking about the Resident Evil franchise. Uh, this will be part one of our review as we will be talking about movies one through three. Uh, freshly watched in my brain, but for some reason they weren't computing. So <laughs> I'll definitely have to uh, be relying on Carter a lot tonight. So um, got a couple of news bits to get to and uh, all that fun stuff. So Carter, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good, sir. How about you? I'm doing good. Kind of tired, but other than that, I'm doing good. I don't know why I'm tired because I'm <laughs> sure I probably slept way more than everybody else so yeah boredom drags you down no matter what dude yeah didn't really do much today besides watch the third resident evil movie and then pretty much just waited all day until it was time to cook some spaghetti for dinner that's pretty <laughs> much all i literally just told you my whole day today <laughs> <laughs> that, that that pandemic life is really oof, it's a doozy yeah right Sitting there looking at the clock, and it's like, exactly. Like, well, I don't want to get too far ahead and watch the next movie in the in our in our journey of Resident Evil. But so, you know that, uh, yeah, no, I almost did that myself because I just kind of got into that zone where I was like, oh, another one. But yeah, I get far ahead and be like, crap, what happened last week? So I did. I did the weird thing where it's like, I think last night or today, I can't remember what I just like watched all of the trailers, like back to back to back to back to back. And I was like, Ooh, that one seemed kind of intriguing, but I really don't want to watch it now because by <laughs> next week's episode, I might not remember. So, but like we said, we're going to get into the resident evil franchise today, but before we do that, we got a couple of news bits. And news bit number one is the return of Joe Bob and the last drive-in with Joe Bob Briggs this Friday. Um, season two of Joe Bob Briggs' last drive-in will be premiering on um, Exploited, the lead of Network. And um, <laughs> um, I believe the first episode this season will be uh, featuring a... Uh, wrestler named chris jericho I'm not sure if a lot of people know who chris jericho is if you don't then you must be living under some kind of rock because <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's pretty much everywhere uh but Dude, um music, television you name it yeah so uh definitely excited um Joe Bob's been doing a few like I said this is season two of the last drive-in but he also has had a few specials um, with their little revival that they've been having. Um, like I said, really excited because like Joe Bob Briggs has been one of my earliest influences in, into the genre of horror. Um, I remember when he was on uh, Monster Vision on TNT back in the 90s. Um, and like I said, he was probably one of the earliest like memories I have of like watching horror movies. Um, it was him, him giving us the total of how many breasts were in the movies and how many, <laughs> how many eyes rolls and Kung Fu and all the different foods and just un unapologetic, uh, comedy from, from Mr. Joe Bob Briggs. So, uh, definitely excited for season two to be debuting this Friday. Are you a fan of, of uh, Joe Bob? You know, man, I haven't I haven't checked out the new stuff. I've I kind of watched a lot of the old stuff back in the day, yeah, and didn't realize that there was a re uh, 
revival of it? Yeah, it's pretty much the same as his old stuff. The only thing is it's on a streaming service, which has no car, uh, commercials. So they just randomly just interrupt like at certain points of the movies and go back to him like in his trailer and stuff. Okay. So it's pretty much the but, same what you if you saw him on. Like out. Yeah. Okay. It's pretty much the same exact thing, just better because the movies are unedited as opposed to when they used to be on TNT. Right. So everything that he <laughs> says. So yeah, like yeah, I said, that I that was a revival, so I wouldn't mind checking it out then. Yeah, like I said, we're going into season two. Um, I think think it's been going on for at least a year to two years at most because they've been it started off as like a one night 24 hour special it was so big and popular like that they just had to bring it back and they kept doing the specials and all the specials okay. kept blowing out the water they literally crashed the streaming service they were on <laughs> um so, so they just get like, that point yeah so they're just like man we just we got to bring it as a regular series so uh, I'm not sure how long the seasons last because I I mainly just watched some of the specials and never really watched the actual seasons of it. Um, uh-huh. So I don't know how many episodes a season lasts, but I'm sure it's probably a good eight to ten, probably. So nice. yep. So that will be debuting or not debuting, but returning this Friday, April 24th on Shutter. So moving on to the next story is we have another casualty of the pandemic with movies being pushed back. Um, I believe we talked about it on one of the live streams um, in the past that uh, Sony Pictures was pushing back like Morbius and a few of their other movies. Well, now there is another um, one that's getting pushed back, and that is the Venom sequel. Um, was originally slated to be released uh, October 2nd of 2020, um, but with the fear of everything unknown going on and not really sure if movies are going to be able to come out by October, uh, Sony Pictures has decided to play it safe and push it back to June 25th of 2021. Wow. So, so they're really going for the safety. safety yeah. Yeah. Like I said, they they pushed a good chunk of their movies back. I know they pushed uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife to March fifth, and they oh also my God, I forgot back, about that movie, dude. Holy yeah, crap. and they pushed back Morbius to March fifteenth of twenty twenty one. Um, now so that one I was actually yeah. looking forward to. That one looks pretty good. Yeah, it definitely does look uh, look interesting. But they're going to try to tie. I think there's going to be some kind of tie in with Morbius and and Venom. Um, down the line, so it would kind of be playing off of each other. Morbius will come out first, then Venom will come out later in the year. Okay. Um, but it also has a uh, full title now. I don't know if anybody saw that. It's actually going to be called Venom Let There Be Carnage. Oh, that's sick, dude. Yeah, and uh, reason is because obviously, if you saw the first movie, um, Woody Harrelson is playing. Cletus Cassidy, who is Carnage, or Cassandy, I'm sorry. Um, so, And he will be in this one, so we will be seeing some Carnage in the sequel. That's going to be sick. Uh, and then also it says Naomi Harris is supposed to be co-starring as Shriek. So it looks like they're bringing some of the heavy hitters in the, the Venom universe in the sequel. I will say it is weird like that first when they brought out you know all the symbiotes i was kind of expecting like a slower release of them i guess yeah so i'm kind of curious as to what they do with the sequel now what did you what did you think of the first <laughs> carnage movie uh or Venom movie i'm sorry you know man like it visually it was cool you know especially that fight scene towards the end but i didn't like how you know because if you're a comic book fan, Venom was straight up a villain. And he later became, if you keep reading, he later became kind of like the Deadpool anti-hero. And I just didn't really like that we kind of fast-tracked to it, because I felt like that was a lot of character development that they just pissed away on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember that. Like, I, I 
saw it when I, the funny thing is I just looked up and I forgot I have a promotional poster from the first movie literally <laughs> hanging up on my wall. I'm staring right at it when I just looked up. It's kind of ironic. Um, I, I saw it when it first came out and that was the last time I saw it. So I, I, I got to get to it again to get, um, I was excited to hear about Carnage though. I love me so Oh yeah. And especially uh, by Woody Harrelson. I mean, come on, dude. Yeah. Of so, all people, uh, that's going to be awesome. Was really excited for it to be released this year and was kind of uh, a bit upsetting, but what what can you do? I mean, with the world, with everything going oh, yeah. on, it is, there's nothing you can really do with it. So, no, I mean, any big budget films anymore, like those whole companies are just kind of taking a gamble right now. Yeah. So, but yeah, we'll be excited to see it once it comes out. Like I said, it now has been moved to Mar- uh, June 21st of 2021. So that shall do it for the news bits. You ready for some Resident Evil? I'm definitely ready for some Resident Evil. I will let you, I'll give you the floor to start us off. All right. So this whole franchise uh, was, we'll say loosely based off the video game that came out in 1996 with the same name, Resident Evil. Uh, Survival horror, you know, you played a character where you walked around in this creepy house trying to, unlock doors and figure out puzzles and stuff and these mutated creatures dogs people zombie kind of thing would just jump out and it was up to you to try to figure out how to make it to the end of the game um as far as the game went i thought it was awesome i loved playing it and so i got super stoked when i heard there was a movie coming out for it um unfortunately i forget the rule of you know anything that's going to be a game book or anything like that is not going to be the same in the film. You're going to go loosely based or extremely loosely based. You know, I will say that I gave them props when it became a live action because they kept some of the characters and the feel for it in the first one. Um, It, it really played out like, you know, in the movie version, it played out like a, like a good, A good movie, you know. Um, You've got a group of people that are your main character, which is Mila Jovovich, just kind of wakes up in her shower and she doesn't know where she's at, stuff like that. And so she starts roaming around and she runs into a security team, I guess. Come to find out the place that she's at, a panic button went off there was a institution this whole underground lab thing that they all work at um there was a infection the computer read it locked down all the doors and the security team then goes in to see what happens um security team runs into three or four people that don't know who they are because the security measures to do like a knockout gas thing so now you've got all of these characters slowly wandering down into the pit of the laboratory um, trying to figure out what happened and what's going on. And so from there on, once they breach the main door, they pretty much walked into the bowels of hell. Like all yeah. the people that are down there are dead and they've been resurrected and pretty much want to eat anything that they see moving. I, when I was watching it, like, cause I, like I was telling you before is like, I haven't seen these in so long. And, um, I rewatched them all over the last couple of days and watching the first one, it gave me a very kind of aliens vibe, kind of like the whole, almost like a military team right? trying to do their little mission. And then it's like each kind of team members, the team members start getting knocked off one by one. And, um, and Jovovich gives me a very big, like a uh, Ripley of I, yeah. just, I don't know why. I just like I was sitting here watching it, and it was like well, she seemed very I mean, Ripley slash Sarah Connor. If you think about it, like a, a you know, she kind of starts off like trying to figure out what's going on, and then becomes the badass of the film. You know, yeah. she's pulling people left and right out of the fire and just kicking ass and taking names. Um, what yeah. I did like about the first one was it had an awesome cast in it. You know, Mila Jovovich, Michelle Rodriguez, Eric Mabius. There's just a ton of people that were super fucking good in the film. Yeah, and I um, 
like the, the probably for me the best scene was like the um it was probably towards the middle where they start going through the trap with like the the lasers oh yes people in like half and stuff like that that was probably for me like my favorite scene of the of the movie just like they're all trying to dodge the lasers and then the last dude's sitting there and he's like waiting to kind of make his move and then it just becomes this huge big like thing where it's like ah fuck like no matter what i do right. i'm fucking done and just slices them into tiny little little pieces now you know like right off the bat you know like as as a gamer you realize like this is not really like the game but they threw a lot of nods in you know you've got the mutated dobermans and stuff like that yeah. um, you eventually run into a a group of them called, or not a group, but uh, one of the other species called a liquor, you know, stuff like that. They definitely, I, the makeup looked good. The special effects were kind of a hit and miss. Yeah. Um, like, I, like I was telling you before is like, I, the only game I played, I guess, from everybody I just found out was probably one of the worst ones. So when it came to like, <laughs> game callbacks i i was kind of lost um i definitely like i said i definitely became more of a like bandwagon fan at the beginning because i hadn't played the games um so i was just kind of like remember like i said remember when it first came out i was i just remember being really into it but then like going back and watching them over. Like, I don't know what, if it was just like I was saying before when we were talking, I don't know if I just, my head was it into it, but it just, it wasn't what I remembered it being. That was the 2001, I believe when this one came out. 2002. 2002. Yeah. I was, I was still in high school when this movie came <laughs> out. <laughs> so, um, I do remember Slipknot being a part of the soundtrack, uh, for the first one, I think. Um, I just watched it and I didn't even pick that up. Yeah, I remember. I mean, I remember when it first came out that they were on there. Yeah, um, I think it was My Plague. It was on the Iowa uh, album. Um, I see. I know more about Slipknot than I do about Resident Evil, (laughs) which is weird because I really don't know a whole lot about Slipknot. So, (laughs) now I said once you kind of like realize that it's more of a nod to the games, and you just kind of kick back. And, you know, you realize you're just watching, like, this survival horror. It's it's not as bad. It's when you look at the name and you're like, this is not Resident Evil, that you kind of fall into that same loop that you do with so many comic book movies, video game movies, stuff like that. But it's just a standalone survival horror with just a shit ton of chaos. Resident Evil is actually a pretty good movie. Yeah, it was, like I said, it wasn't, it wasn't terrible. It just, like... My like I said, my mindset at the time when I was watching it last night, just I wasn't fully invested. Um, I'll have a probably unpopular opinion because you just kind of were talking about how great of a cast they had. I did not like Michelle Rodriguez in this movie. She really, just, it the way she. was kind of turning it up a little bit more. She she reminded me, going back to kind of my Aliens uh, comparison, she reminded me of Vasquez in Aliens. Okay. Uh, that kind of like the marine macho chick yeah. that kind of just seemed, I don't know, she just kind of overdid it for me. I mean, it didn't like take me well, out of the know, movie. I, but... Yeah, no, I'll agree with that. Because like, especially after... Like, towards the end, when a lot of bad shit's happened, she seems to have really, like, just kind of this whole, like, fuck it, I'm good kind of attitude when obviously yeah. she's not, you know. Um, she definitely had a good, yeah. like, a good big character arc from towards the beginning of being, like, you know, nonsense, and then she kind of, you know, sacrifices herself towards the end. Right. Um, so, I mean, it was a good character arc. Um, but like I said, I it was a, it was a pretty good movie, um, just... I hadn't seen it in so long and it's just not what I remembered, but I didn't, I didn't. Yeah. It. No, I think as far as like doing that whole switch over from game to movie, it was a pretty good introduction to moviegoers, um, you know, introducing 
kind of what to expect. You know, you've got all these monsters, and in the movie, it really was like you look down one corridor, you're good. You you turn down the next, and it's just a corridor full of shit looking to come at you. And so I think they did a really good job in that aspect of the uncertainty of which way to turn stuff like that. Yeah, um, like, <laughs> like going to the like a, a opposite. Like Mila Jovovich was really great. Like she, like this is obviously she's because she's in pretty much all of them. This is definitely her franchise, and probably to me one of her standout uh, performances. I thought she was really great as Alice. See, you know, and it took me until like the second or third one to finally get on board with it. Um, I think also because in the first film, you don't like you see her do shit, but you don't really see her like do shit until like say the second or third one, you know? Yeah. Because she's walking around with the security team, so they're really doing a lot of the action, you know, and she's like hitting somebody with a club here, shooting somebody there. It's not until really towards the end that she starts to kind of get the into that hero groove. So when the second film kicks in, like she's in hero mode, survival mode, and I think that and she also she and started throwing the role. She also in this one she doesn't really know the extent of like what like any power. Like also she doesn't have really the full extent of her powers that she does get towards later movies. Right. She doesn't know, right? You know, like she doesn't know who or what she is. She's just some poor chick that woke up in a hell yeah. mouth and had to try to survive it. And it seems it seems like it's something that we've been doing like unintentionally, but like um, with our connections from each week of our our reviews of having somebody from the previous, an actor from the previous uh, review with the Crow was Eric Mabius. Um, I really liked him. He he did really he did pretty good in this oh, yeah. one. Um, Dude, he, you know, and it sucks because he just never like he's never done enough films for me. I really did yeah. like him and. What- does <laughs> someone that gets kind of underrated because like you said he doesn't get a lot of big you know big big movie ex- like exposure right. uh, a lot of like made for tv or slash or just regular like tv shows and stuff like that but this is probably one of his bigger because like how like i said like i said i was in high school so i don't remember like how well did this this do back in when it first came out like box office wise, like I don't remember it did fairly well. Oh man! Um, Cause like, I know looking at like Rotten Tomatoes scores, like it were obviously it's high. It was a high, but it's obviously not a franchise that's gonna get you know a high box a uh, box office. But like, like I said, this is probably his probably biggest movie that he's probably done. Yeah, I mean, because he did like a lot of sci-fi work, and yeah. you know, made for TV stuff. So, uh, box office at 103 million. Okay, so yeah, of, uh, 33 well. million budget. So okay, it did pretty good. So, um, but yeah, so that's pretty much all we got about that. Uh, the first movie, uh, Resident Evil, coming out came out in 2002. We have a trailer lined up for you guys, and then after that, we'll get into Resident Evil Apocalypse. So, trailer. <laughs> underground in a top secret research lab security has been breached a deadly virus capable of contaminating the entire world has been released by umbrella corporation oh my god we have to get out of this building what was that it's the break Okay, we're here to help. Now, an elite team has been sent in to stop it. Five hours ago, Red Queen went homicidal. Who's the Red Queen? State-of-the-art artificial intelligence. The corporation's keeping a few secrets down here. Something you're not supposed to see. But they have only three hours left before it begins infecting and mutating the whole human race. Everyone stay calm. What's that? 
took a chunk clean right out of me. You have to get out. Don't listen to anything she says. She's a holographic representation of the Red Queen. She may be our only way out of here. How is she still standing? She isn't standing now. No one is immune. Resident Evil. You're all going to die down here. So that was the trailer for Resident Evil, which was released in the year 2002. Um, I don't know why I did that. The Conan Conan O'Brien skit from the year 2000 stuck in my head when I was starting that. So if you don't know about Conan O'Brien, then I'm just talking about nonsense. So, um, moving on in our franchise review, we have 2004's Resident Evil Apocalypse, which this was the year that I graduated high school, so going into my high school timeline for some reason. Um, I remember watching this one when it first came out, and I like this one a lot better. Um, okay. I will say, like, right off the bat, what I, the one thing I've liked about the whole franchise is when the movie stops the next movie does like a two second rewind to kind of help you get right back into that mindset. You know, the first one ends with her waking up on a table. The second one starts with her waking up on a table, fast forward a little bit, and then like right back into the movie. Yeah. So it kind of helps you recap since there was like a gap in between the films and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Um, I do remember that. Um, this one starts off with, uh, I think I can kind of do this one. Um, they kind of what you were saying, she's waking up. Um, they're going back into the hive, which is kind of where they left off in the first one. And then the um, one of the monsters, I believe, is released when they open up attacks. I think, is that what happens at the beginning? At the, no. Because uh, they go back to the, the hive at the beginning of the second one, right? beginning of no they go back to the hive at the beginning of the first one all hell breaks loose and when uh jovovich and uh maybe it's make it to the end umbrella steps in and sweeps them up yeah and start to do start to do tests on him so when the second one starts out she wakes up on the test table by herself realizes you know she starts wandering around what looks to be like a hospital and realizes yeah. like it's just fucking dead nobody's there she walks out the main doors and it's just utter fucking police cars turned over, shits on fire, like citywide chaos. Yeah, I remember that. For some reason, I thought they just, like did the beginning before they even go to that was they went down to go back into the hive because that's what they said they were going to do at the end of the first one. And then something gets let out, which causes the chaos. Right. That's what right. I was. That's what I was. <laughs> oh, um, gotcha. Because, yeah, that's how that's because that's what I thought. Because they went down, and then one of the I think it's the tongue monsters, I believe. That's it, doesn't really show what's down there, but like someone's like, ah, oh, they and then they cut to the scene of her waking up in the in the hospital. Um, they so that happens, she wakes up, and then we kind of go and we see that, like, um, everything, like you said, everything's to shit. Um, they have the walls built up and like all the people are trying to like kind of get refuge because like the virus is kind of spread out through everywhere. Um, and they're, they got the walls and they're trying to like test people, make sure they're clean to let them through. Um, something happens. I forgot what happens to where like they some, they find somebody that's infected. And uh, like, well, I mean, like you've got, you know, because first off. We started in the hive in the first one. Now we're actually in Raccoon City. Yeah. Um, which is something as far as like the second game goes, that's where all that chaos takes place at. And so in the movie, you know, you get like 600, however many people pressing to get out of one door. Yeah. One person got infected. Everybody panicked. And so the higher ups said, screw it, shut the door. 
people just wall them off as is. Yeah. Um, so they do that, and then they uh, everybody pretty much has to go back to their homes. Um, and then we get, um, I believe there's a, a team that works for Umbrella Corporation that's, like, left behind. Stars team. Yeah. And they, see, this is where I, I'm going to need your help, because I'm trying to remember how it progresses. Um, Stars teams are actually the good guys. Um, and Umbrella, because they're just so awesome at making grand ideas, decides since we are capped off and nobody can get out, get out the Nemesis project, which is one of their, you know, because we're trying to do like military grade stuff here, um, is one of their best mutations. And so they decide to go ahead and drop it off inside the walls of the city and pretty much run it as a test project to see how the Nemesis, Nemesis program runs. Um, and Nemesis is like, God, what would you say? The whole seven, eight foot horrid monster that can pick up a Gatling gun like it's a pistol and just walk through the city and kind of do whatever it's told. Um, so you get a couple of people like Jill Valentine and stuff like that. You get your ragtag team slowly put together, two people here, one person there, and they eventually run into Mila Jovovich. Um, so you've got like her, a reporter, a couple of cops, stuff like that. And they're hiding out. I think uh, they try to find refuge at a church, I believe. And that's where she shows up, busts them through the glass with her uh, motorcycle to yeah. kill a couple of few. Because would you say they were the tongue? Yeah, the liquors. Ma, liquors, there you go. I knew it was something with tongue related. <laughs> right. Uh, it's, it's very bad how. Like I said, how much I like I seriously I did watch the movies. I'm not lying. Like I just don't know why stuff just didn't retain in my head when it comes to doing the review. Well, some of like like I said though, some of them like you couldn't really tell what was one thing and what was another. Yeah. Uh, be it bad angles or stuff like that. So you couldn't always tell what mutation you were looking at. Um, but they did try to kind of keep it, like I said, like, you know, the crazy looking Dobermans, the lip, the liquor and the and then you got like a really good view of the nemesis. Yeah, um, they they kind of have a mission because they're trying to like trying to get out of the city because Jovovich knows that like in the morning, once dawn hits, they're going to pretty much wipe out the city. So they're trying to get out while that's happening. Um, I don't remember the. The character's name but there's like a because like towards the beginning they're trying to get all these like scientists you know uh picked up so that they can take them um so they're not uh left behind and one of the scientists his daughter gets left behind um there's a car crash which is in. yeah so while they're like once the group kind of gets assembled they leave the church um i believe they're um He's trying to get a hold of him because he has a view of like the city through his laptop with all the cameras and stuff throughout town. And he tries yeah. to get a hold of them so they he can they can go rescue his daughter at, at her, her school. Um so that's pretty much their mission is to find his daughter so that he can get them a safe uh, way out of the city. Um they find her at the school. Um I think the reporter chick gets destroyed. Um, at the school, God, yeah. <laughs> um, and then there's also the um, most of the other uh, team members because there's only a couple of them that actually survive past the school. Um, yeah, well, you had that that uh, that one unit that was in the helicopter. They dropped down, and yeah. kidney candy store dude. All of a sudden, Zach Ward was on film, and I was like, "Holy shit, Zach Ward, fucking awesome." You I know, was watching that. I was like, is that Zach Ward? <laughs> yeah, dude. I was like, oh my God. I was and like, that so guy like, follows me on Twitter. I was very excited. Right. You know, <laughs> and I'm like, this dude was fucking awesome. And so that only like made the movie better for the 10, 15 fucking <laughs> yeah. minutes. That he was in. And so I had to cry a little bit. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck, dude? Zach Ward, you don't kill Zach Ward. Well, but yeah, so they get the daughter, and now it's the trying to get to the meeting spot so they can get the hell out of Dodge. 
the the weird the weird part of, of once they well, I think it was right right when they leave the church they're in like a cemetery I'm like this is obviously not going to be good because right I was yeah, like why they, are they why are they fucking cemetery <laughs> of all the places to stop and go so what should we do this is the place they fucking picked the dead the <laughs> dead is coming to life let's stop at the cemetery. So I mean, it, it left for a pretty, pretty crazy fight scene where all these like bodies just start jumping from their graves, and but it was very, oh, yeah. very not smart. <laughs> no, and that's like again, it was a lot of cool fight scenes in this one, just like the second one, if not better, you know. Yeah. And I will say that I thought the uh, effects looked a little bit better too. Yeah, you could tell that. I mean, the budget was was pretty. Uh, um, the budget was. $45 million this time, which I can't remember what it was for the first one, but um, yeah, so you got a little bit, you got almost $12 million more to throw into the budget, so, but yeah, you could definitely tell they did uh, a little bit of a better job when it comes to special effects and stuff in this one. Um, like I said, I, I personally, out of the three that we I watched out of these first three, I like this one a lot better. Um I think Mila Jovovich, like like we were saying when the review of the first one, she's kind of you know coming into like her powers and abilities more, right? Becoming and like, a bit more. like she'll just walk into some shit. Oh, yeah. I got a spoon in my hand. Fuck it, I'm gonna kill something. Yeah, like I said, that one the scene of the church, where she just busts through the window through the freaking on the motorcycle, just taking shit out like left and right. She was a badass motherfucker in this one. Oh yeah. So, um, but yeah, that's uh, about all we have for this one. So if we want to move on to the trailer uh, for Resident Evil Apocalypse, shoot the trailer. From the leading name in biotechnology, Science Regenerate has a breakthrough from the Umbrella Corporation. Umbrella Corporation. My name is Alice. I work for the Umbrella Corporation. There was an accident. And everybody died. The trouble was, they didn't stay dead. In the pursuit of human perfection, accidents will happen. There's been an incident. How bad is it? We're reopening the hive. I want to know what went on down there. Sir, there's something in here. Infection is spreading faster than anyone could have anticipated. Seal the gates. Our men are still out there. Just do it. We're expendable assets. And we've just been expended. Now, those left behind... We're gonna take you home. ...must battle an enemy that will not die. What was that? We're gonna need more ammo. Move! I'm good. But I'm not that good. They did something to me. They changed me. And one corporation... The nemesis is now fully activated. ...will do everything to bury its dark secret. You know exactly how far Umbrella will go. I used to work for them. I learned the error of my ways. That was the trailer for Resident Evil Apocalypse, released in 2004. As I'm going to do my sweet 90s trailer voice right now. Oh, yeah. in, a, in, a, in a world where things go to shit, Resident Evil Apocalypse. So, 
Um, like I said, that was out of the three that we watched, that was probably my favorite of the of the three. Um, but we are going to move on to the last movie of this review, and that is Resident Evil Extinction, which was released in 2007, about three years after Resident Evil Apocalypse. And Carter, go ahead and take it away. All right, so Extinction carries over, um, and if you've ever seen a Zompocalypse film, you can't stop it. Shit always goes south. And so Extinction fast-forwards to that, and in the opening monologue, she straight-up says, like, yeah, so Survivors made it out of Raccoon City. And pretty much, it's like the intro to Zombieland. You know, like, everything just went to shit. Um, if they're Survivors, they're few and far between. Um, we had some carryover characters from Apocalypse to Extinction and stuff. Um, so you still got Jovovich, um, Mike Epps, and my God, the one fucking thing that I cannot stand about this movie is they added Allie Lauder. I fucking can't stand her tits, dude, at all. Like, she just cannot fucking act. Oh. And I thought you were specifically talking about her tits. I could care. They're all attacked. <laughs> You know, but like I have not prayed and I don't know how long to just watch somebody fucking die painfully. And I just kept hoping for a birthday gift that never fucking came. So I, I'm um, getting a little bit of Joe Exotic v. Uh, Carol Baskins from you with this uh, with this lady. Dude, I just like I don't know why she is so fucking popular. Um, I, she just can't fucking act like she ruined fucking heroes for me. And there's a lot of shit going on in heroes. Allie fucking Lauder. Right. Allie <laughs> fucking Lauder. Uh, <laughs> aside from her, they definitely kick it up a notch. Like I said, it's a global catastrophe now. Um, un- uh, Umbrella has completely gone underground now. They've got an unknown amount of camps that are trying to work on a cure. But, like, in the first one, they're all underground, stuff like that. They've completely cut themselves off. Um, but you've got this one doctor, um, I, Isaacs, who just thinks he's God's gift to science. And so he keeps going topside to grab zombies to do shit with. He gets fixated on Mila Jovovich's character, Alice. And so we find out that he's been trying to track her down because she is infected with the T-virus, but not in a bad way. So he fixates thinking, if I have her, we could finally have a cure for the T-virus. And so he winds up tracking down the group that she's running with. And then, like always, we have just the mad run of chaos and survival. The, so the one question I had, because like I said, this is the first time I've seen this one. I watched it right. earlier today. Um is once they kind of had visual on her, they were able to like control her. Is that right. how it goes? Do they have to have visual eyes on her to like stop her? Cause like they'll like shut her down and then she just stops. Like, couldn't they have done that from the beginning when she like first Obviously, escaped? <laughs> well, but if you think about it, they even stated, you know, like we had been tracking her on satellite. She figured it out. And so she started like, you know, oh, hey, it's about time for the satellite. So she kind of duck and dodge. So they lost her for, I think they said like a year or so. You know, she had been ducking them, trying to stay off their radar. Um, And by this point, we now know she's special. Like she's getting better combat skills. She's got telekinesis or I'm not even quite sure what you call her abilities. Um, You know, so she realizes there's definitely something special about her now that she's bonded with the T-virus. Like, it's definitely amping her up. Um, but it seems to you in the film, when they finally were able to locate her, it was a lock-on to shut her down. That was the only way they could do it. Yeah, because that, that was kind of like I was sit, sitting there and they're just like, all right, shut her down. And then she, like, shut once they got eyes on her, shut her down. And I was thinking in the back of my head, I'm like, if that was the case, like, obviously they must have to have some kind of visual contact like visual right. to, to do that because they could have just done that from the beginning shut her down and just find out where she was at as right. opposed to her running amok like she's been and, doing 
that may have also been why, if they did have the ability, they didn't do it. Because, you know, if she's hiding out in a Kmart, yeah. her down at a Kmart full of zombies while well, she's dead, and we've lost our only hope. So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's just like once that when that happened, I'm like, why did they just do that from the beginning? Up some kind of obviously they had to have visual contact with her, or of her um, to do it, and like they tried to do it, uh, um, and then they she kind of like was able to somehow like with her powers, like you right. said, we don't. She like right. just thought like the, the she like messed up with messed the satellite up for some reason, which took their eyes off of her, so then they weren't able to control her. And then that's when she started like going back upstairs to to find where they were a little they had their little camp where they were trying to control her and she just wiped out everybody that was was there. Um and dude, that doctor had like a little bit of a kid joy there when he saw that she overrode that because he's like, Holy crap, she's even more powerful than I thought. Like, oh boy was definitely like biting into something he had no fucking clue of. Yeah. So then he um once she like wipes everybody out then she doesn't she throw him out of the helicopter uh or is she going somewhere else no it was him running for his life um because they had released a shit ton of zombies on the caravan of survivors um okay. when she realized oh help they've just stopped me they're like really close she went to where they were go where they were um, everybody's doing an evac because, well, we don't want to get caught by her. The doctor gets bit by one of his own and the pilot took care of the zombie and he kind of dragged himself into the helicopter and starts screaming, you know, give me back to base. I need the antidote. And, and then the he end- like, amped up to like the nth degree. So he ends up turning himself into some kind of like a, like a monster. Right. Um, what it like? I'm trying to remember, like, what does he? I forgot. Like, he takes the antidote, and that's what does it, right? Dude, or is there something else? That's what it was. Like he just, like kept jacking that shit into himself. Because I remember the dude that was like ahead of, like, in charge of him that was telling him earlier in the movie to like not uh, yeah, like carry the, on until he got approval. Something. Right. The dude like tries to shoot him, and then just gets right back up, and he's like, "You can't kill me," and then he takes the dude's eyeballs out that's pretty cool right so like apparently which is like i said which is weird because i mean in the first film they were like hey you know we've got an antidote but it depends on how long since you've been bit and here he is he's like jacked god knows how many of the containers of antidote into himself and he's still mutated you know but he also didn't become like the mindless zombies like some of them did he kind of was able to keep his own twisted mentality like it definitely got torqued but he was still kind of like thinking about thinking of himself and you know he still had the same bowl so he was kind of like a combination of like the monsters like with alice like kind of still having like the free free right. will like of your mind but kind of having right. like the monster abilities and stuff like that because i mean he was still having full-on conversations with people he was still doing what he wanted to do to whereas like all the others, they're like, hey, it's that base mentality. You're hungry. You're going to eat. Yeah. Um, now, Which, this one is about the survivors trying to get to Alaska. They found a signal, yeah. supposedly, you know, no infection. So their whole shtick is to try to get to Alaska, like with no gas and this crazy guy stopping them at, at like every fucking turn. Well, that's where shit really goes crazy because they try to go uh, gas up in Vegas, and that's where all hell breaks loose because they there's like a big crate and like they're I think they're gonna try to move it to get to the gas pumps or something, and Jovovich is kind of here. She's like, hold on a sec, and then you hear like the door come down and just like like dozens and dozens of zombies start flying out, and that's where all shit goes crazy. And two things about that, dude. I loved how they went and did that whole, like, you know, because there's so much speculation on if we aren't here, the world would just kind of take over. And so they completely filled Vegas with sand. Yeah. You know, you were only seeing, like, the tops of street lights as they were going, as they were driving through. But what got me is, like, the 
we know we're supposed to be going to an underground parking lot for gas, but here's a big ass con- uh, cargo container sitting on top of the sand like we are. And like nobody fucking clued into, well, that would have to be new if it was sitting on top, not buried 12 feet under sand. Yeah. So, and the movie kind of goes into, they end up going back. I forgot what the doctor's name is. Like the Isaacs. dude that, yeah, the Isaacs and Jovovich, uh, Alice. They end up going back to the hive, kind of pretty much where everything started. Um, Cause I do remember like the whole, like I was saying with the first movie where the whole uh, laser thing kind of, the uh, trap or whatever. Um, and that ends up they being, I run like each place the same, like as far as defenses and stuff like that. Yeah. And I remember that. So that ends up being Isaac's demise. As he's thinking that he's better and like, you can't kill him, but then he ends up getting wasted by the sweet laser things, whatever those are. Yeah. Um, and pretty much the movie ends with like the group, uh, the, Umbrella Corporation kind of like having a little meeting and Jovovich is there. She pops up on the screen because she's at the base and you see all of these like clones because they've been trying to clone Alice to make like the perfect, you know, specimen. Um, Hoping to get as close to her as possible. Yeah. So that's what closes off this this one. And so, yeah. And so that pretty much, like you said, that wraps up extinction. Um, yeah. Pretty much, we're yeah. going to, hey, so I've just got an address for all of you fuckers, and I'm coming for you. Yeah, I like so looking back at these, like, because I, I got a, a Wikipedia up. Like these movies made a lot more money than I, I imagined them because I'm was wondering why, just why they kept pushing sequel after sequel after sequel. But it seems like they're doing almost a hundred million dollars over what their oh, budget yeah. was. This, this one oh, had yeah. a budget of forty five million dollars and it made 149.9 million almost 150 million dollars. So because like, again, like they just kept amping everything up. They they amped up the fight scenes, the the makeup, the special effects, and it paid off. Like each film has progressively gotten better looking. Um and aside from now, water, the cast was always really good, and it, I think that's part of what it was. Um, you, like you said, you you played some of the games and stuff, and you said that they they they're kind they kind of take from the games, but like how like as each movie progresses, do you think they get less or less away from the games, or do you think they still? Well, now I stopped playing around two, and I dabbled in three. Okay. Um, but I've kept up on some of the games and I think they definitely like we launched off of fi- uh, almost said final fantasy for some reason we launched off of resident evil. And then now we've kind of paved our own way. Um, especially as you look to what was this one three, especially as you look to like four and five, they're definitely like on their own fucking path. Okay. Yeah, because like I said, with not me playing really any of the games, like I was just curious on how if they, because I know there was a quite a few Resident Evil games too, so I didn't know yeah. if they kind of progressed um, as they went on. So, but um, not from what I've seen. yeah, that should do it for this for the third uh, Resident Evil Extinction. Um, we'll throw to a trailer and then we will wrap it up for the evening. So here's a trailer for Resident Evil. Clones are not working. The original Alice is the key. Find her, and we can return to the surface. Sorry about this, Stevie. 
really is the end of the world. What happened to it? Because you must have taken it back. We lost half of the convoy. Pretty soon there'll be more of us dead than alive. Okay, spread out. Look for anything of use. Gas, food, ammo. You know the drill. Feeding on infected flesh. My senses have detected Alice. Her powers appear to have grown at a geometric rate. I can have a strike team ready within the hour. Everyone is scared. Good thing we like a challenge. Make sure she's dead. Well, I'm coming for you. Shut her down. We fought the infection. We survived the apocalypse. And now, we face extinction. That was the trailer for Resident Evil Extinction, the third movie of our part one of our Resident Evil franchise review. So um forgot to mention the Killer Crows, which was a really awesome scene. There was, I forgot, I don't know why I just left my head. So, um, but yeah, that should do it for us tonight. We're going to wrap it up and uh, let you guys know we will be back on Tuesday, next Tuesday, a week from today for the, uh, Final three uh, movies, Resident Evil, um, Afterlife, Retribution, and Extinction. Our final chapter. Yep. Wow. I suck at Resident <laughs> Evil. <laughs> but you pulled it off at the end, dude. You're there dead. we go. You know what? A for effort. All right. So what do we got uh, going on for Thursday? So Thursday, we will be back with our group chat where we'll have a big mess load of us talking at the same time and probably not being able to hear all of us. Um, We'll be talking about Castlevania Season 3 on Netflix. Uh, So join us for that. And we will be getting ready to go into the trailer for this week's episode of the Gorecast, which is on Sunday on American Horrors at 8 30 p.m cst and whatever that equates to in gmt where johnny and the giz will be covering mortal Kombat legends scorpion's revenge so until thursday see you later and cut to the mm. What the fuck are you doing here? Getting more coming, no? No! Oh, fuck that! How about again now? No! Oh. Mm. 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 Huh? No! Oh. Ah! Do you want to get Why do you keep no. costing me for games of Mortal Kombat? Because I just watched Mortal Kombat Legend Scorpion's Revenge. It's really, really fun. I don't want to fight. 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 That's not a bad idea, actually. <laughs> Join myself at the Gizgis Sunday, 3rd PM CST, whatever that equates to is GMT. It's only on American Horrors. We're going to be reviewing the new movie from Mortal Kombat, Scorpion's Revenge. In a brand new episode. <laughs>